Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast. It's Bill, Dennis, and Alan, what are you doing here? He stopped pooping. <laughs> <laughs> We're that all mean. adults. We're all adults. We can talk about that. Anyway, that'll yeah. that'll mean something. That'll mean something here whenever you see our when guest 50- on tonight's show. Well, well, I'll just go ahead and ruin it for everyone now. I am not in the this episode yes. because uh, I had my fifty year. You're fifty now. Yep. Get a colonoscopy. That's right. And the most <laughs> the most humorous thing about the whole thing was. Uh, not to prep, that was no big deal. It really wasn't. No. Nope. Um, not the fact that I went two days with eating hardly anything at all before the day I couldn't eat anything at all. You look thinner. That made the prep a lot easier, to be honest. Right. But the funniest thing of the whole thing is right before the procedure, the guy that walked in that was going to do the procedure is a friend of mine that I had no idea that he was a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He's a ro- He works for Rotorooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you went to some you you didn't know who the doctor was going to be before you went i well i know the guy through you know the local music scene yeah and i never knew his last name oh i just knew him by his first i'm like name. i would not, not be going not to get... even his full first name his nickname no. an abbreviation of his first name and it was in a real like hospital type thing right or an outpatient clinic it wasn't like in a barn I will it's a garage. not disclose that information. <laughs> you go down the alley, you turn left, and then you hit this garage, and then you hit the garage, knock on the door three times, and stomp your foot twice, and then that's the secret code. <laughs> well, here, no, here no, we'll, we'll get off the subject quickly. But next time you see this guy at a gig, what do you you just go? You, know, you hose my butt. Now what? <laughs> well, you've seen. I, I don't. I don't know about you, Dennis, but I am a mature adult. <laughs> So there will be one fart joke or one shit yeah, there you go. and then okay. we'll move on. There you go. I probably well, that's what I'm saying. Honestly, I probably wouldn't even bring it up, you know. No. No. I'm sure he won't because he's yeah. done it. He does it all day long. He's like going, oh, yeah. you're bringing work into it. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> but work. It's a shitty but job at somebody. It is a good. shitty job. Well, no, I did all the shitty work the day before. That's true. That's true. All right. So are we done with this? Are we done with this, sir? Oh hell no. Well, now that every, now that everybody has hung up, yeah. yeah. Click. Turned off. Clicked off. No. When you turn fifty, this is part of your life, and if you're clean, it's every five years, and if you got some kind of pop, it's every what three years after three that. Years. So ask me how I, would, I know. So so, Alan's gonna go through this in three years. I will do yeah. it. Actually, I am due. And I, I was telling my doctor today, actually, I went through surgery. I had a cyst off my back today. Not a tumor. And not a tumor. It was a cyst. And uh, actually, four stitches, not too bad. She said it was huge, though. She she showed me it's it's really nasty. I took pictures of everything. but I'm not <laughs> They always say it's huge, but you know it's not that huge. <laughs> yeah, no. She said she goes, it was a, she goes, it was a big one. She said it was yeah, a she's big lying. cyst. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it's on my back. <laughs> no, she said he was a big sissy. <laughs> oh, that I believe. He was oh, a yeah, big I was, sissy. Oh, yeah. I hated it. I was, I was hurting. But anyway, uh, no, it was one of those things where, um, yeah, it, it was it was, I got through it and everything was fine, but uh, yeah, it was, I hate doing that shit. But anyway, yeah. I'm supposed to go for a colonoscopy. I should be doing it by now, but I haven't heard anything from the, I think COVID's slowed everything down. So. Oh yeah. I, w- I was really surprised they got me in when they did. Yeah. So I'm due, but it's going to probably be up the first year. Oh, but. something else. I had to, trying to make a, some money off your ass. I had to get That's a why they got COVID test the off Monday before I could do the <laughs> procedure. Yep. I would rather do the procedure without anesthesia. That COVID <laughs> test. Is, COVID ooh. says, yeah, I don't want to do yeah. that. Well, I, really wait till COVID I, I put my car in park before I let that girl stick that thing <laughs> up my nose. And it's probably a good thing because I punch it. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way. And dude, they can do, they can, they can find out what your, what your DNA is from the last fucking 900 years by a little, by your spit. You know, you can take a piss test and find out what you've done in the last fucking 10 years. They got to cram that thing all the way in your brain to figure out if you got a fucking virus. I mean, you really? haven't had it done yet, have you? No, no I have not. Yeah, that explains it. 
I don't want to have to do it. <laughs> He'd be paralyzed. They're just going to yeah. keep going. He's going to. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they found the reset button. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they're, you know, they're implanting that little thing in your head. That's exactly that's, right. That's what it is. That's so, exactly you know, there is, somebody, RFID. there is somebody that I grew up with that swears. Oh, I know. That's really they, what they're doing. Is they're that's what they're doing. Baby. They're doing it. Yeah. They don't have to. That's what I said. I'm like, for a lot longer. Like, as long as you've had a cell phone, you've you're been carrying valuable. your chip. You're carrying your trip. That's with all right. You. <laughs> anyway, let's move I don't on. Know if it, here. Let's see if I can get this in my notes. Is this a, is this a music podcast? Or are you doing healthcare today? I do healthcare all day. I really Appar- don't apparently know. it's healthcare and conspiracy theories. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's they're they're all the same, lie. aren't they? Aren't it's they the same thing lie. right now? They're the same right thing now. right now. That's anyway, music news. What do you got? None. No, he's fairly actually, record game. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. I got the target variant, and I, I'd like to give a shout out. Well, one, I'd like to give a shout out to Brian Harris for buying extra copies. All of the make, copies. To make sure that his friends got one. And on the other hand, I want to give Brian Harris a hard time for buying all the copies. So. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the good thing is, Brian Harris didn't come to Columbus, Indiana, because I got my copy yesterday. Yeah. No, well, I did I, not. I will give Brian a shout out because he bought. You know, I think there were five copies there. He bought those five copies, and you know, he sold me a copy for what he paid for it. I know oh, uh, two of our other listeners. He sold them their copy or whatever at whatever right. price. So he just for seven ninety nine. Well, it was nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, like, actually, and, and I'm I'm like the only dude on internet that didn't have his photo and didn't go to Target. And the only reason is I bought your through the, no, I bought the uh, album, which is in the silver and black, and it's coming through that E whatever it is company E1. that's E one, and yeah. they have absolutely said now because of COVID, it's going to be like the twenty eighth before I get mine. I've heard a lot of people say that. Did so anybody, I'm going to be getting it. But have, have you looked at your cover yet? Or the front cover or the back I, cover? Well, I have I looked have. at it, but I haven't looked at it that closely. I don't have one. Take a look at the time and temperature. It's 427.51. Oh, okay. All right. And okay. it means? That's Ace Frehley's birthday. birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't have one, so I don't but, know. But uh, I didn't – I wasn't sure what the, the differences was. I had heard someone say that they thought that, she is a bonus track that was only on the target exclusive it's on all tracks. but jeremy jeremy asbrock responded to one of my posts and said the track list was the same on all of them the difference is just variances in the cover like the yeah. target exclusive yeah. has the the blue color and i don't know if the font is a little different or whatever but and it's as far the, as the album hype sticker is different you know yeah. but other have you looked at, have you is, have you opened it yet i have not and i will see, i not. opened it i opened it and played mine did you yeah, but there's a booklet inside there that has a different cover. Oh, that's cool. That's oh, the next time you the next time you yeah. come to Evansville, you're bringing that with you so that I can see it. Right? I can. So I'll I'll send send you a pic. Are you okay. not gonna open it seriously? Why you not? No, gonna I'm not gonna open it. I opened it actually. I opened it just at the top and down the one side, so the plastic's still on it. And I just pulled it out and pulled the CD out and stuck it in the CD player. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Fair still. Enough. Like sort of in I'm plastic. Sorry. Everything I buy, I'm fucking open. I don't care. It, no, I don't. It's okay. Shit. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what I am doing. So what did you buy? What have you bought Me? this week? This week I went yeah, to. You, I got a really. You got, you got like got, empty. You got deep pockets, bro. No, I got. Uh, no, Kelly's got deep pockets. Week. I got five albums this week. No, I got deep pockets. But anyway, <laughs> you want to talk about? I did deep get cuts today. Dennis? I get. I did get a uh, <laughs> Def Leppard High and Dry, which I've been wanting this album for a long time. I have that one. But, Got the book broker, and I got I paid ten for that. Uh, I got Rush, uh, original Caress of Steel. Never heard uh, of ten. Are you serious? You never heard? No, of dude. It? It's like I know three Rush albums. Oh, it's no, it's not old three. Not, it's like during the he 70s. says I know three. I oh, know, know three. Got you. three got you. Rush albums for fifteen. I got uh, Bark of the Moon, Ozzy Osbourne. I still have not got this one out yet, or messed with it. Um, um, I'm going to pull this one out first. This, this is not the fourth one I got at, at, uh, at the book broker, but Kelly went to target and she bought herself a, uh, it's a, in pink vinyl limited edition target. 
Amy Winehouse. Oh, I have. I don't have the pink one. I have a black one. I'm not That's a good a record. Fan. I'm not a fan of what Amy Winehouse, but I will listen to it. But Kelly wanted that, so I said, you know, buy it. I'll put it on the record. That's a good record for you. Yeah, I'm just not a big Amy Winehouse fan, but I, but I may you know, after listen to it. So, you know, her studio work I don't care much for, but if you've right. ever seen any of her live performances, that right. that's where she shines. Right. Well. I did get a hold of this, and I'm so fucking happy. I am just ecstatic. New England. Oh, no. Nope. No, quiet. <laughs> I got, no. How about Queen's quiet? Right? It's quiet, I, right? I, I quite, yeah. No, Queen's right. <laughs> I got uh, the warning. I paid 20 bucks for it. It's in very, very, very super good shape, the vinyl-wise. The cover's got a little bit of the, the ring on it. This thing here, I, I have played it twice now through my out. I, I, I'm just, it's just a unbelievable album. Um, his voice, you know, of course, you know, so was Don Dawkins. So was every, Paul Stanley. So was everybody on their first albums or, you know, in their early stages, they had, you know, a great voice, Jeff Tate, uh, his voice on this, you know, Jeff Tate still has a great voice. Yeah. I don't know if he could, can he hit, he, I don't think he can still hit these notes. So I saw him. In Nashville, I, I, listen, I saw him okay. in Nashville before the shutdown, and right. he, he brought it. I, take hold of the flame, hit all those notes. He that take hold of the flame is that on that album? Yes. Then no, he did not because he did not perform that song. Because he can't. <laughs> well, first of all, right, first of all, they did Rage for Order, right? And they did Empire, and right. then uh, the um, the encore was Last Night in Paris was strange. Okay. And Eyes of a Stranger. Uh, none of them on this album. But this was well, the I know first none album. Of those, oh. I know none of those are on that album. However, but this first album. However, let me finish. Okay. Um, I believe that there's some contractual bullshit between Jeff Tate and Queensryche. Some of that stuff he's allowed to perform. Some of it he's not. Yeah. Probably. Because yeah. there is two Queensryche that are out there. Um, this album was the one that was out, just came out when I seen them open for Kiss. Um unbelievable i mean and i was i was actually and kelly hates when i play albums a lot of times and i had uh side two just starting and take hold of the flame it just finished and i had it cranked up pretty hard and i heard her yell down from upstairs i love that song <laughs> i'm like going that's I'll always cool you so thought i'm gonna crank it up and it, it is i mean it's and I have been looking for this album for a long time, and I'm so glad I got it. And, and for even twenty bucks, I don't care. I'm gonna. I've seen it on eBay for up to three hundred bucks. Seriously, I mean, it's there's been some albums. stuff that lately that on the auctions just, that are just. Fun. Well, you sent us the other night. What did that thing yeah. that one went for? It was like, it was uh, uh, cherry pie went for what a hundred and ten. Oh, there's been stuff that's been it's bullshit. I mean, it's just, yeah. Well, it's only bullshit if you don't have the money. But well, it's, and it gets in an aux, you know, when they get in an auction situation, you got them guys going, yep, 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 yep. You know, it's going to do that. But anyway, yep. Tomorrow night, um, another auction. Yeah. But anyway, no, I was, glad to, I, I was glad to get what I got. And then basically this was, and I even talked to Chris when I was in there and I said, I said, why are people getting rid of these albums? He said, it was basically a uh, husband and wife that came in and this was his brother's collection and he'd been dead for 10 years. Wow. And it got to the point where they had just been holding on to this stuff for a long time. And they said, you know what? It's just time to get rid of it. And they got rid of it. So, you know, because, you know, I can't see where anybody, you know, has these albums. Why are they getting rid of these? And they're in that good of shape. And it's like, and the thing was, is, you know, some of the covers a little bit rough. Some of those them, you know, a little bit rough here and there. But the albums were looked like they had never been played. And, it, you know, it's good. And I actually picked up two for Bill, and he'll show those. Yep. I will someday. And so anyway. Yep. Anyway. All right. Anything else? That's it. I forgot to mention our guest tonight at the beginning of the show, which is brilliant. See, see, this is where you're supposed to say, I held off to mention the guest. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I'm just pretty much gonna put it out there. So tonight's <laughs> guest, tonight's guest is uh Tim Rosner, who is oh the twenty God. twenty nineteen uh production manager of the year which it, we had a great, we actually did this interview twice because we had a little problem the first time. So Dennis and, and I are, Dennis and I are on this one because Alan was having problems. And uh, so we are uh, ready to go. So take a listen. All right. We want to welcome Tim Rosner 
who is the 2019 Production Manager of the Year. Congratulations, Tim. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Thank you. Cool. So um, you guys have been off work for a little bit and um, no signs of coming back on. So what's going on? Well, you know, like, like everything else, we're, uh, our industry was the first to be taken out and, and uh, it's more than likely we'll be the last to go back to work. Uh, our, our world is no secret, works by close proximity. Not only the fans, first and foremost, that have to be comfortable. And, uh, you, you know, obviously you've seen a lot of things that are drive-in shows and different attempts and shows at home. And well, everybody's doing everything they can to, to continue to let out those creative juices and the songs and, and the performances and things like that. But uh, we want to get back to live shows, obviously. The, the people want us to get back, back to live shows. When that uh, proximity issue is resolved, we'll be back. And uh, I know that uh, all the major players in our industry, which is totally 100% shut down. So they, you know, to give you a, a percentage, they said 77% uh, of the people have lost 100% of their income. I think it's more like 80 to 85% because I don't know where the 13% they're talking about. I've, I've talked to everybody I've talked to uh, a, a handful, one handful of people is, is working on uh, one-off shows. Otherwise, everybody's shut down. And um, uh, they're, they're working on uh, different technology, like uh, uh, things like uh, they're, they're working in all, all sorts of environments and vocations of how to sanitize people through walking, uh, through uh, a, you know, a walkway that scans your temperature, disinfects you, things like that. But we want to get back. Um, we, you know, it's, it's crushing. Uh, what, what we do want to talk about a little bit tonight is um, uh, the red alert we had. Our industry had a, uh, a nationwide call to arms where all the venues in the country lit themselves in red to uh, bring awareness to Congress mainly uh, to, to shed light on the fact that we're a major industry and we've had uh, no directed uh, uh, help. Um, you know, we're, we're not part of the travel industry bailout, although we affect the travel industry a great deal, uh, and hotels and, and, uh, and all those things. And it's, uh, it, it's something we need help with. We're not, we're not looking for um, a, a bailout. We're looking for a lifeline uh, to get us to when we restart, because We've had the three greatest years in our business. You know, keep in mind, guys, that because everyone's recording revenue went down the tubes with the with the change in how people listen to music, the revenue stream for all of our favorite performers are live shows, and the, and that has been uh, amplified in and increased in the last seven to ten years, but mainly the last three years have been out of control. We've We've had not only our best three years, we've had uh, everybody in this business has been so busy, we haven't been able to see straight, which has been great. Record number of shows and record attendance and record number of bands out on tour. So we're anxious to get back. And great shows. There have been some great shows. I was look, oh, so looking forward gosh. to this summer. It's just, damn, is is bad. I, I think that, you know, as much as you guys are missing the shows, just just please know that all of us are missing it as much. I know Very you guys are, <laughs> it just, it's, it's, we it's do. so tough not being able to go to shows. It's, it, it is. And whenever there's a huge amount of people that, that we, I mean, I love going to shows. We love going to shows. So it, I love you going to shows and, and I'll tell you what, I'll just, I don't know that anybody that works in our business isn't also a fan. So even though uh, that particular tour you might be on that you've seen 60 of the exact same shows, you know, maybe that, that gets uh, a, a little thin sometimes. Uh, but certainly when we're on tour, we take advantage all the time of having an off day in a city where some of our friends are working on another show. We go try to see as many other people's shows as we can uh, within reason. You know, you're pretty gassed when you get a day off, but... Uh, uh, we're fans as well. And, uh, you know, in my case, I, I'm one of the luckiest people in the world. I've had an entire career working for 
and with uh, people I'm a fan of that some of which I've been a fan since since grade school I mean or or high school at the very least you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, I don't let a moment pass by where I don't uh, stop and smell the roses but suck it all in as much as I can and just look around and realize uh, how cool it is because sometimes you, you do uh, I wouldn't say you take it for granted but you get caught up in the doing your job uh, and sometimes don't stop to see the moment and you know it's many times we've we've done a video of some project and you watch a video later and you, you say wow that happened that was a, what an amazing guitar solo that was had at the, at the show <laughs> I was on stage with that I didn't see you know, so. <laughs> that's cool so Tim what was you uh, being that COVID shut you down were you getting ready to start another tour right before this happened and what was it i mean yes you say? uh and and because it wasn't announced i will i won't i won't uh, pop the surprise and say what it was because right. it's a big co-headline tour and um we're really looking forward to that one still have plans in 2021 to do that everything really has just kind of moved um a year six months nine months to a year forward uh, and um, uh, so, yes, uh, that was going to be a great, uh, a great tour, just a, you know, a, a fantastic classic rock, uh, roots of rock and roll sh show where the show was top to bottom, a great show. And, um, and then another project I was working on, which was a, uh, uh, and, and still will happen, which was a high tech virtual reality show that I also definitely can't talk about that one because that's going to be big news when it's when it's announced. Uh, hopefully, twenty twenty one as well. Well, you'll have cool. to come back and uh, announce it here. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have you do have at least some of that. That'd be great. Yeah. So I, I, I was thinking about that. You know, um, you know, so many artists now are making extra money on tours with meet and greets and stuff like that. Do you do you think meet and greets will be gone? Do you think artists will continue to do that or do you think that'll do way to do it? Look, I mean, it's, that's something that you can do safely. I believe because, you know, the meet and greet doesn't have to necessarily be a handshake, a hug and a kiss. The meet and greet is being in a room with your, uh, with your favorite artist and having them say, Alan, what was your favorite kiss song? And that interaction is, Sometimes, I mean, I, I know there's a couple artists that I would uh, uh, pay a good amount of money to, to have that interaction with. And uh, in my business, luckily it happens and usually I'm getting paid for it, which is good. So uh, <laughs> you could say my, my world has been 40 plus years of uh, one hell of a great meet and greet, but I think they'll still happen. Um, it, it you know the interaction of just being in that room with somebody and and being able to look at them and see that they're living breathing humans and it's it's cool i mean it's that's what people want you know it's a it's the it's the personal attention a lot of times um bands pay more and more attention to it. when they first started doing it it was kind of like a cattle call okay come on you've seen the elephants move on and um but the artists realized how number one how much money people were paying for the meet and greets and number two how important it is these are the those are the core group of the fans of everybody's world it's it's very rarely somebody who's just got a ton of money and wants to do it. the people who do the meet and greets have been following that artist for a long time and it really means a lot mm -hmm. to them so i think they'll find a way to do it As a matter of fact I think things will potentially be turned upside down where there will be perhaps more emphasis on a larger meet and greet and a smaller show. And, um, uh, and, and I see uh, a, a path forward where some of the structures and how the shows will be will be uh, a higher ticket price, if you can believe that. And I know the ticket prices were getting you know, high, too high for a lot of people's uh, budget already. Uh, but um, I, I do think that there will be smaller capacity and the tickets will be more of a premium. And personally, uh, to me, I, I don't, I love the, obviously, I love the production of a stadium show, the, the over the top, anything worth doing is worth overdoing uh, philosophy, which we try to subscribe to on all 
all shows of that nature. And uh, it's, uh, but I, I certainly love the, the moments where it's a small, intimate show. The, you know, the, uh, some of my most favorite moments of things I've seen have been sound checks where nobody was there. And um, mm -hmm. that these shows uh, coming up in the future, there'll, there'll be a mechanism to do it. And it will start out small and we'll work back up to the over the top uh, sweating on your buddies, sharing a beer uh, scenario again, uh, hopefully one day soon. I'd just great. like to see him get. I'd just like to see him get going again. Like it's say in any kind of situation. Not we're actually the Philharmonic here in Evansville is starting their first show on Saturday night, and we got season tickets. And it's going to be odd because it is. It's a smaller. It's going to be a smaller orchestra. It's going to be they split the Saturday night up into Saturday night and Sunday night, so they're going to fifty percent. You know capacity so it's going to be less but it's going to be kind of a it's going to be an interesting show it's going to be, it's just going to be live music you know i don't care <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be uh the you know the, really the audience opportunity to watch a musician play live uh right. that, you know you get something extra from watching musician play uh, that part that either you know or you don't know but you're in awe of how that person can create that beautiful sense that just tickled you in that way that it did, you know, whether it's a, you know, it's a sensory bombardment in a lot of ways. And it's really, uh, it, you, you can't recreate it any other way, which is why uh, we're, uh, everyone is particularly uh, anxious to get back to uh, the live scenario again. And we need it for our, our health, for our interaction amongst ourselves. Yes. You know, it's yeah. uh, it, 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 uh, how many times it has, has all of us been at a show where you show, shared a moment with somebody and you knew exactly the moment you shared. You never met the person. You'll never see him again. But you shared that moment. And it was, you know, and it's uh, uh, it's something whatever it does, you know, uh, 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 stimulates the endorphins or whatever it does in a human that's that's a good feeling that we that's what we want to get back to yeah and so many of those so many of the shows have to your point I mean have meaning I mean my my dad took me to my first kiss show in 1978 and the last time I've seen them on this on the end of the road tour I flew to Jacksonville Florida to be with my dad my sister and my two half brothers and we went we all went for the first time ever we all got to go at, at the same time. And it would just, you know, that kind of thing was just so meaningful to be able to do that, um, that we all got to be there together. It was, it was really cool. So it's not, it, it isn't just really about the music. It's also about the experiences, like you say. And, and I think that that's the stuff that, um, you know, you, you can't get sitting in your living room watching a video. You, you, you have to be able to be there and experience the, you know, reactions to everything and, and stuff like that. So, um, and I'll, I'll yeah. tell you, the, uh, you know, you just made me think of something. You know, I, I have four brothers, no sisters, four brothers, two older, two younger. And I can easily say that each one of my brothers and I have a distinctive shared memory together that was related to a show that we we're at. And th that memory of that show, when I think of my brother Jeff, I think of Willie Nelson. When I think of my brother Tom, I think of the Grateful Dead. When I think of my brother Dan, I think of Wilco or Sting. When I think of my brother Jack, I, I, you know, I think of all kinds of music because he really turned me on to it. But, you know, it's, it's the connection that you make with friends and everything. And it, it means so much. You know, I, I got into this business because that started for me and I love it. And to be able to make those things happen. Uh, so in interviews, people will say, you know, gee, you have a great job. What, how can you sum up your job? Well, I could, I could sum it up technically, but in, in general, uh, I have a job that, uh, you know, we're not saving babies and we're not dodging bullets, but everybody that's dodging bullets and saving, saving babies and everybody else wants to leave their job for the night and come to ours. So that's, I've always thought that that was a good thing. You give escape, you give release, you give, you give pleasure for, for a short time. You know, you could be having me have the worst day ever and you go to concert that night and Boom. You know, you don't even think about, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, um, did you miss that one? Yeah, we missed, yeah, the, we missed, missed the, end, that one. 
Yeah. I mean, think how many babies we're responsible for. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny you say that because um, it's really funny you say that because uh, my youngest. About the talking about the experience. Okay. No, no, no. But but honest yeah. to God, my my youngest was, <laughs> I was there. Well, not there. Not there. I was there but, that night. <laughs> and we've had this. We've we've. He knows this, so it's just gonna. But it is kind of funny my youngest was conceived after a kiss reunion show in louisville kentucky <laughs> first the second the second kiss show <laughs> the second kiss there. show on that tour so yeah uh, it was <laughs> on the reunion tour yes on the reunion tour yeah yeah the first yeah. reunion tour what you're saying is i was responsible for yep. your yeah. <laughs> you, you your the magic you created help those guys create on that stage release the endorphins and I had to be proud. Glad to be part of it all. Proud. I actually, I actually have a photo of me and Phil sitting just hours before the event happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about the. We gotta show. stop that. We gotta stop. <laughs> We're gonna get in trouble. Uh, no. <laughs> Another version of memories based around uh, shows that you guys shared something together, and it was cool. And and it's great that the the one thing that's so fun about Kiss is. Obviously, I haven't worked for them in many years, but uh, uh, it's it's so generational. I, I don't I don't care if they're having a, a a bad night. It always has to be great for the band to see to look out from the stage and see the generations because you can clearly see it oh, yeah. from the, within. You know, a lot of spotlights are in your eyes, so generally you really can't see too much beyond the first couple rows, but. You see there that it is generational, and and uh, uh, you, know, you hear the stories, and it's like this. You know, it's it's three times the third generation is now uh, telling stories about their their show that they went to go see. And there's a there's a few bands like that left. So, see, that's another thing that I don't like about this COVID the whole this whole bullshit. You know, this 2020 year of no music. You know, a lot of our heroes and a lot of our favorite bands. They're getting toward that end, the end part of their careers, lives and careers, both, you know, and we, we, we've missed a year, you know, we've missed a year of this, of some of their prime, you know, here, you know, Kiss was on their farewell tour and, you know, it's going to. But they didn't want to say goodbye yet anyway. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying they were on their farewell, the second now, I guess, of this farewell tour. But, you know, it, it is, it is a, we've, you know, <clears throat> during COVID, sorry. During COVID, we've had, you know, there's been, you know, some stars that have passed away, you know, and we, they could have been out making music. And, you know, it just, it's just unfortunate that we were getting. We've lost, we've lost uh, some amazing artists to COVID and to the time and maybe to mm -hmm. the stress of it. And, and uh, I will tell you kind of a funny story that brings up. I was on a Zoom call with uh, quite a few older rock stars the other day. And um, uh, we, were, we were talking about this very thing and how the effect was. And one of the rock stars on this call who was in their mid seventies was making the joke that Charlie Watts is gonna be 80 when they go back. And, and uh, so we discussed the fact that this year off is like the equivalent of dog years for rock stars. When you get past 70 and you're a rock star, missing this year is like the equivalent of missing seven years so it's it's tough and uh and boy i'll tell you it's one of my concerns and uh, we voiced this and we're at least talking about it is a year off even though we've been doing it straight i like i said i this is my 41st year and it's pretty much been straight through uh, it's a year off, and muscle memory for everybody is going to be uh, interesting. The, the industry and the players in the industry and the people behind the artists will change considerably They're through attrition and, and whatever. People will have moved on uh, out of this industry. It's high stress. It's, um, you know, at this point, there's zero income. So unless you can uh, uh, survive, uh, in a way, uh, a lot of people are moving on. So the so the business will change, and um, and, and let's see what happens. I mean, it's going to be um, it's going to be a different approach. I happen to think 
that the overwhelming excitement from everybody and to be back going to a show will be the ultimate show of rebellion the the, the biggest f u to the to the virus that you can give will be to get back together and go to a show and uh, we're uh, anxious to see that come about and we'll be there waiting and ready yeah so you need to make sure that you figure out a way to include that um f u in your tour package <laughs> oh, it will be dennis somewhere. Is, yeah dennis is 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 muted and has no idea <laughs> i was sitting there going why did he hear me no and the thing is is when this gets going i'll probably go see shows that i really wouldn't go see just to go <laughs> to be honest i'll i won't be so picky i'll be like there's a concert i don't care i'll go <laughs> you know think now uh we're in a discussion today there's been a lot of discussion with um uh look there there were some monster companies audio sound companies lighting companies video companies trucking busing monster companies worth millions of dollars well just like everybody else um some have been somewhat successful in doing a little bit of repurposing and and making for instance ppe uh, uh, supplies and things like that. But, you know, a lot of the companies have their hands tied and the, uh, the, or everything's a guess right now, like everything else, but it, especially in our industry, because we know we're so far off. Uh, you know, we're not a restaurant that at least like it or not, I know they're struggling, but maybe they have 25% capacity. They're still doing carry out. We're talking about the difference between an absolute shutdown and at least something dribbling in. Um, and we, we fully expect that there could be uh, some smaller productions coming out where, and that's okay, because um, with, with the exception of KISS, the KISS isn't going to go out with any less bombs, but there will be, you know, the, the factor that, that a lot of people don't see, the behind the scenes is something we're, we're closely looking at, the proximity issue of the audience getting together is one great puzzle. The first and foremost one that needs to be sorted and, and the public needs to be comfortable with that to, to make it happen. Uh, but the second one is how do we as an industry operate? We are in the ultimate Petri dish sardine can of a tour bus riding with each other long before COVID uh, for all these years on a tour bus, if somebody got sick, uh, a, a cold on a tour bus, it usually ran one through bunk one through bunk 12 uh, at some point on that run. So we're addressing how do we go from city to city with all our people so crammed together, six foot, <laughs> the heck with six foot, you're a foot in most cases when you're, when you're in the bus. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, testing, by the time this happens, testing will be different and possibly vaccine, who knows, but we're still talking about that because that, uh, execution of producing those shows from city to city to city currently in our current method of doing that is, uh, is a undoable, uh, 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 calculation right now. And, and it's something that we've got to work on and we're working on it. We're working on it, but you know, it's something that um, you don't look at these things at first and then this thing throws the, the, the ultimate curve. But I will tell you what guys, the people in this business, in the live music business, particularly the touring industry, are some of the toughest problem solving, never say no, never say die, uh, worldly, world traveler, uh, objective, uh, creative people you can think of. It's, you know, uh, I think they have, uh, I, I'm so impressed constantly. The, the people in this business have the greatest problem solving capacity next to the military. They don't have the red tape of the military. So in many cases, problems, insurmountable problems are solved to make the show happen that you wouldn't believe. And uh, of course, a lot of times there's so much money involved, they throw a great deal of money at it to make the 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 uh, the problem has to go away so 
you, you know, you, you talk about this. How often are you guys, I mean, I know you guys are working behind the scenes. Are we, are you talking like you're doing, are you every day Zoom with other companies and other people constantly having meetings about how to do this? Or is it like a once a week thing or how, do, how is this working now? Well, I'll be, I'll be very honest with you. When COVID first started happening, because we were already into Zoom meetings in this business. We, we were into video teleconferencing. And so all these things are, are natural to us. So immediately we were boots on the ground, having meetings, organized meetings with top level people from all different, well, then we soon realized about two months in, uh, hey, we're running in mud here. There is no, uh, unless you all want to keep banging your head against the wall, we don't, we have no idea. Nobody can really speak on what path this is going to take to come back. So it's kind of turned into um, less serious, productive calls, unless you're talking about moving dates. When you're talking about the specifics of, you know, the agents and managers and production uh, are talking about moving dates, but it's still so much of a crapshoot. It's all these Zoom calls now have kind of turned into a uh, a general friendly wellness check, a group wellness check. <laughs> Instead of, you know, uh, from your office with the with all the uh, platinum albums and everything, you're doing Zoom calls from, I uh, did a Zoom call from the boat on the water the other day, or somebody did one called in from the golf course. And they're really like, how you doing? So we still don't know what's going on. So let's not talk about work. Let's talk, you know, right. and that's what it is right now. We, we're chopping at the bit like you wouldn't believe, but um, it's kind of futile uh, at this point. Other than <clears throat> the, one, the one thing that is really important, but it, everybody uh, in our business every, anyway has gotten the message is the red alert, the call to arms, the activization of calling your congressmen and your senators to – uh, force the vote on um, uh, the bill that would provide relief for the entertainment community. And um, like I said, it's a, it's a lot different than what a, what a lot of industries are requesting. Uh, you know, one, number one, between fundraisers and philanthropy, uh, philanthropy and everything else, we are in this industry uh, uh, can clearly say we're we're, we're heads and shoulders above uh, what we pull out of a community as far as dollars. We generate uh, far greater income uh, than we take out everywhere. And um, uh, it's, it, you know, there's a, so many uh, ancillary companies and services and people that are connected with all these shows that happen because, you know, think about it. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, you went to a show, you went to, in Evansville, you went to one specific venue in, in uh, you know, in, in Toledo, you went to one. Now there's a festival and a show everywhere, everywhere before we got stopped was doing shows. So the, so the machine, the income generating machine from our industry has grown exponentially in the last couple of years. And it's, so vital. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're hanging on by a thread right now. If you think there's a lot of people going out of business, restaurants and everything like that, which are small businesses. Uh, our situation is a lot of individuals, which, uh, uh, and it's a highly specialized business. It's, um, it's something uh, like uh, a great t-shirt that our one of my good friends came up with that said, if touring was easy, smart people would do it. So, <laughs> That's a great, I like that. <laughs> I yeah. So it's uh, it's a highly specialized business. It's in, in comparison to a lot of industries, it's, it's small. And because of that, uh, at least I know a, an awful lot of people. There's, there's fewer people in this business that I don't know or know of uh, than there are that I've never met. And uh, that's a pretty cool thing, you know. So it's a great community, very supportive, mutually supportive of, of each other, uh, even more so now than ever. And I will send you guys the link uh, to uh, reach your congressmen and senators. 
to help support this and to, to keep the venues alive. There's all kinds of things. Uh, and, and as well as uh, Crew Nation, Live Nation has put together an effort called Crew Nation, which is a grant, a one-time $1,000 grant to uh, the people behind the scenes, which, like I said, they're the ones struggling the most. And um, they, they are also providing uh, resources for counseling and, and uh, you know, suicide prevention, depression, things like that. Uh, uh, it, it's tough right now because, and I can only speak for my industry, but these are really proud, really creative people. And when you take a uh, really creative person's crayons away and lock them in a dark room, uh, there's, there's a, you know, there's a, there, there's an extra uh, explosive level involved with that and, and not in a bad way, in a creative right. way. Um, so that's, uh, you know, everybody's chomping at the bit. And so we'll, we'll include those resources to, uh, for people that see this podcast. We'd love for you to, to help support us. Yeah, Absolutely. Please. We, we've, we shared, um, I shared some of that information already the first or second day I found out about it, but we definitely will put some more stuff up because it didn't get passed. Obviously the, the last bill got killed. Right. So there we're, who, uh, you know, we're still struggling with it. So Tim, yeah. who, who's, the, who's the author of this bill? I mean, who, who is promoting it up there? You know, uh, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I do. Oh, that's I fine. Show me the names. I would know it, but, um, uh, but I do know that it, it the, the bill is written, has okay. been a matter of passage and um gotcha. you know it's uh hey we've got uh we've got republicans and democrats uh in in our business that are all suffering uh there's no there's no color there's no race there's no uh geography that separates anybody everybody across the board uh in in this industry in every industry but especially in this one has been affected oh, so exactly. So, so I, one, we're, we're about out of time, which is, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> um, I do, but I do have a question about how long is it usually the, ahead that you're setting up tours? Is it, is it, are the dates a year out typically already, or is it, I mean, in, in a normal season, or is it you're six months ahead or, because I know sometimes like some of the really, really big artists anymore are putting stuff out a year ahead of time. I mean, you buy tickets now and it's a year out and it's okay, so well, frustrating. So I'll answer that question in two ways. First of all, normally it's a solid year out. I mean, the, the shows sometimes are booked a full season ahead as you're working through the 2019 season. We already were talking to promoters while we were with them about the 2020 shows. And you have a routing and those kind of things are already uh, well underway. Now, here's an interesting thing with COVID. When this does come back, when they flip the switch and say, ready, go, what is going to happen? <coughs> Excuse me. What is going to happen is all the shows that have been canceled will start up all at once. So there will be the most massive power struggle for who gets what date in what venue and and literally um there'll be sleepless nights for months on end for the venue people and and everyone else because it'll be a mad rush everybody's revenue will start up again and and frankly at this point the only revenue that some of these artists most of these artists have is touring revenue there hardly is any more recording mm -hmm. revenue coming. Right. so when that so it, it's a year. I mean, and that's the frustrating thing. You want to plan now because you know when it does start, uh, it's more likely that all hell will break loose. If we thought our business was hectic before, which it was the most hectic, think about it uh, times, you know, times 10, 20 of the artists that are competing with that date on that Saturday night in that city, all the routing. It's, uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be I'd the like beginning of a music tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Well, Tim, yeah. Tim, we really appreciate you being on the show tonight and, and, and talking about this. And we definitely, you know, Dennis Allen and I, and Allen wasn't able to be here tonight, but um, 
you know, we definitely will help support this. Um, we all go to shows constantly. All of our buddies that are listening to this stuff, we all go to shows constantly. So I, I think that, you know, we just definitely help need to get, need to help get the word out there and support, you know, not only you guys, but everybody else in the industry. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's just, it's just a big, huge problem, but, um, you know, hopefully a music tsunami will come soon. Yeah, going to concerts will make everybody feel great, and and hearing live music will make everybody feel great, and it will happen. It's not, uh, they're not, uh, whatever the forces are involved, they're not going to hold us down. We'll be back. Yeah. It's not, it's not if, it's just when, and that's yep. what we're looking for is the win. Hopefully the win is soon, and then we'll yep. all win. <laughs> so hang on just a second, Tim. Don't go away yet. Yeah. All right, so, um, hey, don't forget to check us out on agesofrock.com. You can check us out on all the normal media. Um, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, um, all that kind of good stuff. And until next time, we'll see you later. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks. <laughs>